love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that, and God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your host, Cam, and today we are joined with our analyst, Maurice Claret. Mo, what's up, man? You see him. I'm yeah. about to say, yo, I was just <laughs> about to say, bro, you are not bandwagoning like murder. You have, <laughs> you've been here since the beginning. Before NCAA college basketball started, you talked about how you went up to UConn, you worked with the basketball team. You are not pump faking at all. If anything, you may spin off the pivot. You are not pump faking, bro. <laughs> you know, murder switch. Title Town's on the road. We're traveling. Nah, you've been with Title Town since the beginning of you getting on this show. And I'm not big on college men's basketball at the moment, but however good uh, UConn is, it's bets out there like UConn versus the field. That's how good UConn is. People are picking UConn versus 63 other teams. So you obviously knew something that we did, and of course you're close to them up there. But uh, so far, so good, man. So far, so good. Yeah, man. So so I will tell you this. One, they gave y'all the open invite. They said everybody, they always been inviting out to the show or to one of their games. So that's the open invite. They, they, they wanted me to let y'all know that it's an open invite. That's one thing. But two, man, it's the first team I think I've ever, like I've seen them from probably four or five years ago. I've been going up to UConn. And just to see them go from like this little scroungy team to weeding out all the issues and weeding out all the, the players who really weren't playing at the coaching staff pace and to watch those dudes go and win it last year and to lose some key pieces and guys who contributed a whole lot and then for these dudes to gear up and do it again, I'm excited about it. You know, I just believe anytime you beat somebody about 30 points in the, in the tournament down at the uh, Sweet 16, I think you were forced to be reckoned with, but I always say it one game at a time, but I'm excited. And, you know, hopefully they get over there to Boston and uh, go play for the championship. When they do, you know, I'll be there in person. Definitely, man. Well, look, real quick before we start the show, I'm sending the open invite. I got tickets to the Final Four Women's Championship in Cleveland. It's right up the road. So if you want to oh. roll, we got courtside seats. You're more than welcome to come. It's in the state. You know how we do. We're going to act crazy, <laughs> nigga. So, uh, we, you know, we're going to be there for the for the final four and the championship. And it's an open invitation for you if you want to come. Oh, I, I, mean, I didn't know it was up in Cleveland. I'm there. That's yeah, right yeah it's in Cleveland. Yeah. Yep, let's do it. We, you know, we we floor seats. We don't even do second, third row, man. We on the, we on the nah. wood porch. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's Okay, so now let's get into the topic. So we got to start with Draymond Green. He received his fourth ejection of the season, and videos went viral of Steph Curry getting very emotional after the ejection. So the question that I want to ask you guys is, do you guys feel like Steph lacks leadership with Draymond, or do you feel like it's not up to Steph to solve? No, I, I when I have um, thought about this, I thought about, uh, and, and I'm pretty sure Cam can understand from an entertainment standpoint, but also a street standpoint. What I think Draymond Green is, is he's like, you know, whether you're famous, you're a notable athlete, and you got this homeboy or this nigga whose only job it is is to be tough, right? And when shit go left, you love that he there, and you love that he's tough, and you love that he'll handle business, right? But then there's other times where the shit don't be that serious and the nigga be acting wild and he'd be like, man, you just got to do some shit that we shouldn't be in, right? And mm -hmm. I've had experiences like that with my homeboys and, you know, they just, you know, Youngstown niggas and they'd be like Youngstown niggas and you love them, yeah. you know, when shit go left. But when they don't know how to control that, um, that fearless take everybody on mentality, it ends up getting guys into trouble or into situations that you probably don't want to be in. Or that you probably shouldn't be in that somebody with a uh, with a cooler head would prevail. And then you got to add in addition to this, Draymond Green has created a reputation out of this. 
and he only knows how to step, go with the shoves and the pushes. I'm pretty sure he extended his career in Golden State just from that because I'm pretty sure Steph, Clay, and all those guys are like, you know, keep this nigga around because he makes life easier on us, or he he does something that we can't do. And so I wouldn't say Steph lacks leadership, but Steph is in a situation that I think that he just doesn't know how to figure out because how do you go to your homeboy and say, you know, you've been protecting us and all this shit has been working all these years, but when you ain't winning and all of this shit that um, that you probably used to do, people will say that that contributes to why y'all lose it. So it's not a Steph leadership situation. I just think it's the situation that Steph doesn't know how to navigate but you can elaborate cam but, but i'm pretty sure you know some of what i'm talking about yeah mo look bro you know a goon when you see a goon he's the goon for the golden state warriors and what happens is it isn't this stuff is lacking leadership you made a great example when it works it works and when it goes left he seems crazy for draymond I only have four ejections this year because he's been suspended so many so many games this year you know, he's usually on the verge of 15, 16 technical fouls, which means you'll miss a game in the playoffs once you get a certain amount of technical fouls. Um, so I'm not saying he lacks leadership when it comes to stuff, but you you, you phrased it terrifically streetwise because we all know them niggas where sometimes it's like, yo, bro, we don't need this energy right this very second. I, I dig it when you need it, but we don't always need it. You know, it's a movie I played in called Paid in Full. And it's a scene in the movie, because I'm supposed to be the goon or whatever in the movie, the wild nigga or whatever. It's a scene in the movie where my character Rico gets mad at his homeboy for not letting me go crazy on somebody. And he's like, yeah, nigga, that's why I'm Rico. That's why I do what I do, da, da, da. And it wasn't necessarily called for at that particular situation. He like, calm down. And I think Steph wouldn't have been so emotional. It's like almost Steph was almost crying. You know, he put his jersey over his shirt, wiped, it looked like he wiped tears away and everything else. Because you got to realize for Steph Curry in this particular situation yesterday or the day before yesterday when this happened, is they are one game of not being in the playing. They're in 10th place with only a one game lead on Houston, who could potentially take their spot in the playing, which means. The staff Curry been busting his ass all fucking season, not even to get to the playoffs, which is stink for him. You got Clay not playing well. Uh, Draymond, you missed a plethora of games. Mm -hmm. And the cohesiveness is just not there as it usually is. You know, with Golden State, it was a time maybe in November, December, January, maybe even February, you'd be like, okay, they're eighth, they're ninth, they're eighth, they're ninth. And it's getting two weeks left. And this now they're in 10th. So now it's like, yo, bro, we ain't hitting the switch that we thought we might have hit. Now everything is detrimental. So with Clay not playing good, Draymond getting kicked out in the first quarter, Steph Curry's like, what the fuck? Because he's having a phenomenal season. Steph Curry's season is phenomenal. So when you see him like that, it's like, yo, my nigga, I've been doing this all season to try and at least get us in the playing so we could get into a seven game series. And when you go left like that, it's like, yo, you don't really want to finish this season up in the playoffs. You don't want to do it. And Steph Curry, I don't know this for a fact, but he may be the only one mentally still in it to get to the yeah. playoffs. Clay may be thinking about, damn, I'm not playing good. I got to extend the contract this summer. What the fuck am I going to do? That may be mentally why he's not playing good. Draymond, like, shit, they done kicked me out 20 games this season. I don't give a fuck anyway. If we don't go to the playoffs... <laughs> It's because niggas that kick me the fuck out. Who gives a fuck? Meanwhile, Steph Curry's been there one through 82. I know he's missed, I mean, still some games left, and I know he missed a couple games, but he played the majority of the games this season, and he's doing everything he could do, so it gets frustrating. And he's probably thinking, do you want this like I want it to the point where he got emotional about it? And I think people are questioning his leadership because – it looked like he was upset. It looked like he was sad. It looked like he was crying. But he knows what he's got in Draymond. We got to remember, man, no disrespect, and I don't think this will happen to Steph Curry and Draymond, but Draymond out here snuffing niggas, man. He's slapping niggas, man. <laughs> he's doing all type of shit to niggas, man. You know, who knows where his brain is at? Not saying he's going to go crazy on Steph Curry because that's his guy, 
But we've seen him wild out on a teammate before. And I'm not saying his relationship with Steph Curry is the same as Kevin Durant. But you see him go crazy on Kevin Durant when they're on the same team, on the bench, in clutch moments. <laughs> so we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't question Steph's leadership. It's more of a dealing with your personnel. You know what you got. And at the end of the day, it works sometimes. And right now, they're not in a position for Draymond to be getting kicked out in the first quarter against an Orlando team that's decent. Really, really decent. You know, they came away with the victory, Golden State, that is. But that wasn't guaranteed they would get that win on the road with Draymond Green missing three three and a half quarters of the game. Now we are joined by May. So basically, to keep you up to speed, we're talking about Draymond's fourth ejection of the season. Basically, we saw Steph Curry got very emotional. Do you feel like Steph Curry lacks leadership when it comes to Draymond, or do you feel like it's not Steph Curry's problem to solve? Mm. Let me switch glasses for this. <laughs> Tell you how I'm seeing it. Um, Draymond, Draymond got to cut it out. He, Draymond, you got to cut it out. And I think when it comes to Steph, Steph is such a, you know, he's such a good guy that he don't, he don't really feel like he need to correct Draymond. But part of his leadership is going to be him growing to the place where he does correct Draymond because they got to stop. It's out of hand. I I, I, I agree with that. It's, it's out of hand. He got to stop. Y'all was saying it doesn't need to stop. What was the, what was everybody else saying? No, what what I said is that it's a it's a situation like you got a nigga who's who's just an enforcer, right? Or the only skill that he got, or the only reason he around is just to, you know, deal with confrontation. And when you have confrontation, you know, it works. And and you know, he he deals with the confrontation. But now that they're not winning, uh, and that guy can't control his emotions, but he's identified as being that guy. Uh, it's just, be it's become problematic. And I just think Steph don't know how to deal with it. You know, if you think about just NBA dudes, they really deal with basketball, some some life issues, business issues surrounding that. But they're like those interpersonal relationships of telling the nigga who used to protect you or who's the tough guy that you, that you doing too much. Like, I just think that's a different type of personality where Draymond might look at all these niggas as like his little niggas. Like, even though these dudes may be bigger stars, he may feel like he's a force and he can't be talked to. Like, you know, go ahead. I like that point. It's almost like you're the rapper, but I'm the muscle. So, yeah, they're checking for you, but you need me to do <laughs> what you're doing. So I'm going to tell you how it's going to go. You're not going to tell me how it's going to go. And, 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 and that's... And, 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 and and Mace, that's exactly what Mo said. He used the rap scenario before you got on. Uh, he used the, he used that exact terminology. It's like you have an entourage. I I refer to the scene that I did in Paid in Full when Rico wowed out and said, "This is what you got goons for, nigga. This yeah. is what the fuck you were thinking. Which was the point of having goons around if you can't use them? That's why you know what I'm saying. And sometimes it's called for, and sometimes it's not." But at the end of the day, that's what you got on your team. That's all he that's all he does, really. And nah, I ain't gonna say that. Come on, I knew you was gonna go <laughs> shake your head. Draymond <laughs> does so much more than just fight niggas. You oh, know, okay, but not what he wanted his legacy to turn out to be. Just he was uh, an enforcer. Nah, he brings <laughs> he's a point forward. He's a good spot up shooter. He um he rebounds. He, he does a whole bunch of a, a laundry list of other things. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. His his legacy should not just end up being that all he was was a nigga getting texts and getting thrown out the game. So, well, what do hey? What do niggas know Charles Oakley for? Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. He's so much better than Charles Oakley. I know Killer and, would agree with that. He, Draymond does look, look, so much more and, than Charles Oakley now. Look, in Draymond's defense, as many players that came in to the Golden State Warriors organization, uh, we don't have time to list as many from Run TMC 
Demonte Ellis, the however many other players I'm not naming, Latrell Sprewell, Bill, Billy Owens, a lot of people. He's the all-time leader in triple doubles for that organization. Mm. So, and then, and not only that, it's stuff that he does that doesn't show up on the stat sheets because there's no stat for certain things he does. So I'm not going to say that that's all he does because he, what I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I don't have the information in front of me, but last time I checked. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he has 40-something triple-doubles. Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony, which is a good friend of mine, he, and I know him to be a scorer like we all do, he has two triple-doubles in his entire career. Hmm. So we can't take for granted that Draymond is just some wild nigga, but I have to agree with Mace. You don't want that to be a legacy because that's what niggas will remember you from. I seen something on, uh, I was scrolling the other day and, to make a good point, and I'll wrap my segment up with this, is that Einstein had did, did something real quick, and he had did nine times one, nine, nine times two, 18, nine times three, 27, all the way up to nine times 10, and he put 91. And everybody was laughing at him because he made a mistake and was like, how you going to say nine times 10 is 91? And they was kind of going crazy at him. But he said, I did it purposely because I knew y'all would ostracize that. Forget the other nine times tables that he got right. The yeah. last one he got wrong is the one they ostracized. And that's kind of what I believe Mace is saying, that you do so many good things that this is what they'll remember you for. Not saying he ain't been wilding. We ain't going to act like he ain't been wilding for a long time. <laughs> yeah, he de he we, definitely we, been wilding. That was we the ain't gonna act point, killer. Yeah, we're not going to sit there and act like he ain't been wilding, but it's so many things, 40-something triple-doubles and lead the Golden State Warriors organization and triple-doubles as a franchise is incredible. Stuff that doesn't start show up on the stat sheets. But if you keep wilding, wilding, that's what they're going to remember you for and forget all the good things that you've done. Yeah. And then he has 43 career triple-doubles and 32 during the regular season. So it's yeah. great people don't even see because of all this other stuff happening so right. before we go on to the next question i just gotta ask do you guys feel like with the stuff happening with draymond and clay do you guys think things have gone too far where they can't still recover or do you guys think that there's still some leeway or some room space left for them to actually be able to bring it back together for the three of them on the team are you talking about indefinitely like just going for it as the organization yeah just the three of them like how do you feel about them as they you know go along I don't know. Um, that, that's the tough. I, I'll pass it to one of those. I, I don't know because, like, they they are older, and I just ask myself, at what point do you start to um, respectfully break the dynasty up and start to rebuild for you know the next ten years uh, that you're going? But I would imagine those same dudes they still like they still sell tickets. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a tough question for me to answer. <laughs> well. Mo said respectfully break the dynasty up, killer. He said respectfully. So how does a respectful breakup goes, Mo? Maybe we need to start with that before I say what I'm about to say. Well, at least you you ask, like you you have a conversation with somebody and say, hey, man, we're going to try to rebuild for the next couple of years. Where can we send you? Or where would you like to play? Or, you know, do you want to stay one more season? and be a role player and retire on your own terms. You know, I think like there's a way that, you know, if you if you contributed much as much as those guys did, I think that there's conversations that you can have, you know, that that would be me, but um, what's my man, James Dolan, <laughs> see how he be serving dudes and sending them everywhere. <laughs> they may do them the same way. Yeah, I think, I think honestly, you got to send them you got to send them wherever you got to send them, man. It, it don't get that much leeway, but I, I don't know. I would I would ask them if they want to go to this city or that city. But when it comes down to it, I mean, we got to do what's best for the team, champ. You know, that's part of the basketball thing. But when it comes, when I think of this, this nucleus, we talked about this, I think, yesterday. It, 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 there's no way you're going to be able to keep this together. Cam said it best. He said he doesn't care if they win the play-in. If they win the championship, this team is still breaking up. And didn't you say that, Killer? Yeah, absolutely. Or they got to bring some other players in that's going to compensate for 
the lack of uh, wins in the regular season. Like I was saying yesterday, you're right. Golden State of the Bay Area is not used to losing in the last eight, nine years uh, in the regular season. So this is kind of new territory for them. What I would say is this, my opinion is this, and it's a great question that you brought up, Stat, because it's two things. Draymond is under contract. Steph got a contract coming up in a couple of years. Clay contract is going to be up this year. Um, Clay is probably willing at this point not to leave the Bay to take a significant salary cut because of the way he's played. I said, and I'm talking about significant. And yeah. the reason I say that is because um, I don't know about Steph and Draymond is under contract. They'll be there next year. As far as Clay is concerned, you got to take a cut. But to me, G, this is what I'm saying. Their general manager at the time, and not just at the time, uh, the new one as well, is going to have to make some tough decisions. But to me, they really, really fumbled the ball um, when they had a terrible season. Steph was hurt. Clay was hurt. Draymond played a couple of games, and they had the number two pick and went with Wiseman when they could have got LaMelo Ball. And they didn't get LaMelo Ball, mm -hmm. and they could have got fucking LaMelo Ball. But that goes to show we want to compensate. Our, we want not compensate. We want to appease our guards. We want to make sure there's no, no, no uh, animosity towards the guards. Now, don't get it fucked up. They end up getting Jordan Poole and winning the championship with him. But imagine right now LaMelo Ball on the Golden State Warriors with Clay playing bad, Steph still playing good. And he knows, you know, because Steph isn't a traditional point guard. You got Steph coming up the, on the wing and LaMelo Ball bringing the ball up. Man, listen, now, he's been injury prone as well. But LaMelo Ball and Golden State right now, you're looking, we're not talking about this, I don't think. Me personally, a healthy LaMelo Ball, you're not talking about this. They wasted the pick on Wiseman, end up trading Wiseman, and you're not going to get a number two pick unless you, you stink. That year they stunk. And you had the opportunity to get them. And when they didn't get him, and Clay was already hurt, I said to myself, they going to ride with these niggas till the wheels fall off. Because you don't just turn down a LaMelo ball. Not that he's not good at basketball. He's great at basketball, but he's marketable. He's going to put people in the seats. He's light-skinned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He matched the whole aura <laughs> of what's going on. Yeah, it, he matched the whole aura of what's going on in Golden State. And they could have been a splash stepbrother, cousin. <laughs> and when you don't get LaMelo Ball, I said, they're going to ride with these niggas to the wheels fall off. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think they really dropped the ball moving pool. I think it was the perfect place for them. And it's showing even with them in, um, in D.C. Let's see. Good points. And you said ride to the wheels fall off. And the wheels are starting to fall off. So they got to figure it out. <laughs> Okay, so the Lakers are currently the ninth seed, and LeBron said he's got to start focusing on his health. He said, if I'm not healthy or anywhere close to being healthy, then it's not good for our ball club anyway. It's not good for me. So thoughts on his mindset? Yeah, I, I said this early in the season or a few weeks ago, uh, LeBron playing a different game. And um, I don't know who it was that I just recently seen him on a podcast that they said, hey, man, the reason that LeBron's longevity is the way it is is because he doesn't put his body in a position where he's redlining all the time, meaning that he's not, um, you know, being in full sprint mode or uh, uh, taking his body to, to, to a point of his exhaustion. And he's resting up and always thinking about, you know, uh, excuse me, extending his career and so, so on and so forth, right? Excuse me, I was trying to get my thought out. But they kept on saying that he doesn't, press his body or push his body to the point of exhaustion so he's not injury prone and he can last uh, longer than a uh, pause than, than other guys in the league. But what, I, what I'll say is this, I, I'll just follow right here because I stumbled around over a few words. I think that LeBron is saving himself so he can play with Bronny. That's just my personal opinion. I think that he's happy with uh, the play-in tournament. I, I really believe that he says, like, look, man, what am I going to do? We're not going to go win a championship. And that's kind of like what he's saying. And I think like he just masked it and framing it in another in another direction. So you're what what happened to leaving it all on the floor? Come on, Mo, pause. That's crazy. 
You honestly saying LeBron doesn't give his all? Not right now. I I really I, I think he's at the stage of his career that I've won all of my personal accomplishments and everything that I wanted to do, and I'm in a place right now where I'm going to extend my career. And you know, we won the playing tournament. I'm, I'm cool with that, but I don't see us going out here and competing for a championship. <laughs> <laughs> you know I me. Mean? I just think he's there with it. I think it's more of a business decision for him. So you think he, in his mind, is like just do enough to keep going, and we um, and me and my son play together. Is that next year? Do you think it's next? No, year? no I think Bronny coming back to college this year. I don't think he's going to enter the draft. I think he has another year in college. But oh. I personally think, yeah, I personally think that's what it is. Oh, so then that's why LeBron is preserving himself so he could play the year the year yeah. after next. Oh, I'm gonna give you another one. So if you sit down and listen to him on that podcast with JJ Reddick, right? Yeah. Um, my man is sharp. He's a historian. He's very detailed and strategic in his approach. I guarantee you, LeBron has to be looking at Kobe and how Kobe messed his Achilles up. And I really think that he's saying to himself, like. Why would I go out here? My body broken down. Like go go, and I know you don't you're not on social media like that. But um, Savannah Savannah had a clip where she was like, or he had a clip where he came home and asked his wife, or she asked him like, "How do you feel?" And he was responding to her like, "Man, I'm beat up." Like, and he's talking about being beat up, and he was talking to JJ Reddick about how many miles he put on his body in seventy thousand minutes. So I think that he's thinking about how Kobe popped his Achilles, and he's like, "Man, I don't need none of these like." super connective tissue issues uh, this late in my career because I want to be around. That's just my personal opinion. Wow. That's very interesting. Now we have I it. totally, I totally agree with Mo. Um, not the way Mace is making it seem like he's not giving his full effort. Like that's how Mace is approaching it. I totally disagree with that. I think that Mo is 100% right to where Look, we're not out to playing right now. Let me take a game off here so I can rub it up for the last eight or nine games so we could possibly play the plan. Because if they make the plan, we have to also realize he's going to be in a seven-game series. He's played more minutes than anybody ever in the NBA. He has the most points more than anybody in the NBA. And I'm just going to read this off real quick. LeBron James' last 10 games, 26 points. 19 points, 11 rebounds, 31 points, 5 rebounds, 29 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, 18 points, 13 assists, 9 rebounds, 40 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, 25 points, 7 rebounds, 10 assists, 20 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 26 points, 5, five assists, 10 rebounds, uh, triple-double, 23 points, 14 points, uh, 12 rebounds. That's a nigga who, 39 years old, last 10 games, whether he takes a game off or not. That's his last 10 games. I don't get not giving it all and not putting it all on the floor. I'm saying a nigga who wants to play till he's 42, 43 years old and saying, damn, I can't do this for 82 games. I've been trying to give the fucking team to this nigga. He don't fucking want it. And what the fuck <laughs> am I supposed to do? God damn. Look at the numbers. The numbers are saying I'm giving it all my all when I'm out there. But 82 games, to do that for 82 games at 39 years old, he's going to be 40 this year. To be doing that at this point is just fucking amazing. So I don't look at it as he's not leaving it all on the floor. I look at it as, look, I want to be playing. And I don't just think it's about his son. I know he definitely wants to play with his son. But I think it's more about I want to play myself another four or five years and I have to take care of my body to be able to, to pardon me, to be able to do that. That's how I look at it. That was a great that was a great point, Cam. I'm glad you made that point. You know what I'm thinking about? The game he keep missing is a Giannis game. Just hypothetically, somehow, <laughs> some way, every time he need to rest, stat. Now you're the statistician, stat. I need you to look up. <laughs> Why is he always resting against Giannis? <laughs> this is it. The, you know the guy at his position. Why is he? Why is he resting? It's just a a good question that inquiring minds and basketball savants would like to know. Why? Why is he resting against? You know Giannis, but then he's healthy the next day for who he's playing. <laughs> 
Let's just tell the truth. It is, it is what it is, right? Or are y'all changing the name of the show? Come on now. What's going on here? To be fair, though, with that point, yes, he did <laughs> miss the Bucks game, but the Lakers still won anyways. And if we are being honest, if he is trying to preserve his health, like we know obviously the hardest teams to be right now. So if it's like, look, I don't want to put that much pressure on my body. It, it would make sense. I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do because as you being, you know, this generation's GOAT, those are the games that we want to see. But yeah, rest that- on these other niggas. Rest on these, pause, these other games. Don't rest a Giannis versus LeBron, right? If I'm a kid, I'm going to get popcorn. That's the game I'm I'm looking forward to. I, I circled this one, right? Is that right or... I, mean, yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that point. And especially East Coast versus West Coast games. I've been on the record saying that, not just because it's LeBron either. When you're a superstar and you're one superstar is on the East Coast and one superstar is on the West Coast, you only get to play each other twice a year. It isn't like you're on the same coast and you play three, four, maybe five times a year. You only play one time a year. So I, I totally agree with that because that if you live in Milwaukee, the Lakers are only coming to see you one time this mm-hmm. year. That's it. So as a kid or a parent or anybody who's a fan of the Lakers, you only get one chance if you don't have enough money to drive or to go get Chicago, which is probably the next closest city, or go to Detroit or go whatever is around. You can only afford this game, and LeBron doesn't play because of the rest. I'm definitely upset. I have to agree with that. Yeah, and 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 thank you. Thank you, Killer, because – he rested both games, the East Coast game and the West. You did. Stat, he rested both Coast games. No, I'm that's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying mentality mentality wise, that's what makes sense because when you say, okay, this is 80s team, and then he drops 34 points, 23 rebounds, it's like, well, it's his team anyways. So I'm out for this one. If this is his takeover. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm no. like, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, like for how it looks to say I, it's 80s team I, and go play the Bucks, and then he I, plays I, like that, then it makes sense. It's that I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> but no. Florida loves you. All of Florida loves you, you know? <laughs> but I don't get what you're saying because <laughs> when we talk about other people and we say that they're, you know, if we said that, um, who is that? Anthony Anthony Davis is is resting against Joker. <laughs> not go for that, right? Yeah. We definitely wouldn't, right? Right. I'm just trying to keep the same energy. That's it. All right. No, I mean, I get both points because even me initially, I just feel like focusing focusing on his health. Like, yes, it makes sense, but we the people, that's not really something that we want to hear because you are our generation's goat. So we want to see you play. I get the fundamentals of it, but like. That's not what anybody. I wants. think what I think what Mace is saying, and I do agree with him on this part. Take off against Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> take off against Indiana, nigga. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like take you, off against you, them. You gonna rest? Rest <laughs> against them niggas because we want to see Giannis against LeBron James. I right. have to agree with that. Yeah. That is a that is a total I fact. See you against Tatum now if. You get to New York, they ain't got no 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 um big man. I mean no no small forward like that. Rest. Enjoy New York. But if you if you against somebody premier at your position, we need to see you in there on that game. So are you willing to say LeBron James is hiding or ducking the smoke, Mace? I- I'm going on the record, he's ducking Giannis. I'm going on the record for that. He's ducking Giannis. Noted. Okay. On that note, we're going to go to break. And when we return, we will discuss Savannah James' new podcast. Don't go anywhere. What? She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She's tired of hearing, I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about she want to be free. 
Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Suns will play OKC. Underdog fantasy has Kevin Durant at 23 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower? Mace? Higher. Higher, Katie. Yeah, higher. Yep. Hey, Devin Booker is at 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Higher. How many again? 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Lower. Okay. And Chet is at two and a half assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? (laughs) <laughs> that's it that's the hardest that's the hardest um this is the hardest um question that that um underdog has given thus far two and a half hmm lower okay i'm gonna go higher okay download yeah. the underdog fantasy app and you can make your picks too so lebron james wife savannah james We'll be, ho- we'll be co-hosting a Girl Talk Sessions on her new podcast called Everybody's Crazy. What do you guys think about her decision to come out of her low-profile image? Mm. You know, I, yeah, I had uh, two uh, just quick thoughts on it. Uh, I don't know if they'd be quick or whatever, but uh, it made me think of, I, I got a homeboy who's a business partner, right? And uh, he's, uh, he's he has a ton of money, right? And yeah. his uh, wife uh, is always or has always, I don't want to say she had a problem, but every time she's around him, she always makes it a point to say, hey, this is my thing or this is something that I've done myself independent from uh, my husband or whatever he does. And she doesn't say it in a way to shame him, but she says it in a way to say, hey, you know, I contribute to what's going on or I have a brain to think and so on and so forth. And when I think about LeBron and his career, you know, we all the same age, uh, him and Savannah a year younger than me, we all from the same area of Ohio. Uh, I just would think that after all these years, 20 years of dedicating yourself to kids, 20 years of dedicating yourself to uphold his image, 20 years of, you know, making sure the kids are raised right. I think it just comes to a point where everybody wants to be known for themselves. I think that's one element of it. But then the other thing is that, uh, I seen that she was coming out with like a either a lip gloss or makeup line or something like that. And I really believe that you can't push a product if you don't nobody know you. And they know her as LeBron James' wife, but I think this platform may be a way for people to get to know her independent from uh, just the squeaky clean image that they had. And so that was my thoughts on it. I'm actually happy for it. Uh, I just think with so many like, just, um, I don't know, that's the wrong word to say. I was going to say just, like rag, raggedy imagery of like black women. I'm happy that she's stepping out because she's viewed as a respectable woman, a respectable lady. And hopefully there's more imagery of like, you know, a different image of black women being put into the space. Um, I would, I would start by saying um, that Savannah James, I know a lot of times we, not we, but I mean, sometimes I play around with LeBron a little bit, pause, but I think she has done a phenomenal job as a wife. I think she's done a phenomenal job as a mom. And I I don't I don't think she get enough enough praise. Not not from LeBron. I'm not saying he don't give enough praise, but people to see how she has held herself together over all these years. So I I, I speak of her with great praise. Um and what she's been able to do with her children, keeping them on a straight path. And to to support somebody else to be great and how she's kept the home intact, making sure that there's a peace in that household, making sure he can focus on um being great as a as an athlete, why you never have to worry about her or what she's doing or how she's carrying herself. I just, I just um me being a person that know what that take, that's that my hat just go off to her about that. So if she's doing a podcast, um, I just I just hope that it goes ex- exceptionally well because she's been a great pillar in the basketball society for what she has done. She's never compromised the brand. Anything that she wants to do should be grand. 
grandly support it. That's what I would say. Yeah, that was great words, Mace. Um, I totally agree with everything you said. And back to your point, Mo, I believe the first thing you said, I would totally agree with. Look, uh, I've been holding shit down for years. Uh, the kids are great. Y'all know my husband is the arguably the best basketball player ever, depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> and I really believe that the family, her mode, I don't know this for a fact, but she looks like she's so laid back. And that's her image. But I know the Midwest women, they got something to say. You know what I'm saying? They <laughs> they got they got something to say. And I'm and and it's I'm not saying bad, I'm saying intelligently. You know, at the end of the day, they got something to say. But I believe this was family orientated. Like, mom, get out yeah. of there. Yeah, boo, go ahead, babe. Talk about LeBron, babe, go ahead and get this. Yo, this is your time. The yeah. kids are grown. You know, the daughter's not all the way grown yet, but she's old enough to know. Uh, Bronny's in college. Bryce is right there. Look, everybody's in L.A. The, everything's accessible to you, to where you got your husband <laughs> who could probably get you in anything you want. I believe the family pushed her like, Yo, go get it, mom. Or if they didn't push her, they supported it a yeah. lot. Pardon me. So, I'll, no, I'll say you, this was another thing, right? Look at Rich and how they started off. Like, look at Rich, look at Mav, and look at his supporting cast. Really, in the last two or three years, you kind of seen Mav and Rich kind of coming to their own because I think that they felt that they got LeBron where he always wanted to be. And I just think that this is just kind of like another one of those tentacles. Uh, that's just coming out of that whole camp and say, hey, man, you go do your own thing like everybody else is, is doing anything. Yeah, and she should have, and she's going to have full support. I know she got our full support, and not just because she has my birthday. So that's another <laughs> reason why she might be an expert. I'm, Savannah, you might be an expert, you know? You know? Yeah, well, congr I just want to say congratulations, and I'm looking forward to it. Yes, congratulations. I'm definitely looking forward to it too. Those are all super great remarks. And I'm sure like she's going to get an overwhelming amount of support because once she deserves it, she has held it down for a long time. So I think it's good for her to be able to have her own space to be able to say how she feels about things. And it looks like it's going to be for the girls. So I support anything like that. Super dope to yeah. actually yeah, be I know. Listen, listen to that. Everybody's crazy. She might be looking like, look, look you got to think about this, right? And that's why I'm I'm very, very interested to see because LeBron and everybody else like, go do it. Just don't red table talk me. And we yeah. good. Because <laughs> 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 the, I should be the first red, guest, Savannah. The, I should be the red first table guest. Talk, People red, are crazy. Red table talk is a mess, my nigga. Red table talk's <laughs> a fucking mess, B. A fucking mess, B. Word the mother. I I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't really it. say with to that would be all bad. That would be all mm. bad. But for real, I should be the first guest. If we're talking about people is crazy right now, <laughs> I would be a great guest. People want to hear what I gotta say, Savannah. <laughs> that is Mason's pitch. There we go. Okay, so there have been rumors that Earl Spence departed from his longtime trainer, Derek James. Is this news shocking to you all? Maurice first. Yeah, it's shocking to me uh, because I think uh, Earl just may be delusion that it was because of his trainer that he lost to uh, Bud Crawford. And if, uh, if he's surrounded by anybody who can be honest with him, I think that these people should say, nah, nigga, it wasn't the trainer. Like sometimes a motherfucker is just better than you and you can't beat them because they just have a higher level of skill or just their time. And um, and I don't think that um like like here, here we go. Derek, whatever, what was the last name? Derek, um I forget his James. last name is Derek James. Derek James. Um, and, and I apologize, Derek James, if you're watching this, but he had just one trainer of the year, right? So you don't go win trainer of the year, get a bunch of guys to that, that that's in your camp to succeed, and then all of a sudden shit just doesn't work, right? And I just don't see anybody who's going to go get anybody who can uh, get him to beat Bud Crawford. That's just my opinion uh, with, with it. And I don't know. It's just, um, I, I don't know. It's one of those situations that's sad to me when, you know, you've been rocking with somebody for a long time and then you lose and then you blame them rather than saying, hey, man, 
like I'm just not the guy to beat Bud Crawford. So yeah, that's I I think it's crazy to even think about because like once you get knocked out, the first thing you do not need to do is switch trainers. That's that, that because it is communicating that you're not taking accountability. That it's the first thing. Like if you want to add somebody to your camp, add somebody to your camp. But we saw this, we saw this with um Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Hey, wow. He goes and get another trainer and get knocked out worse. And get knocked out worse because the, the new trainer is gonna change your whole style. When realistically, when you look at Errol Spence and you look at um, Terrence Crawford, and I love both fighters. I, I, I love Terrence Crawford a little bit more than Errol Spence, but Errol Spence does a lot of things textbook right. It's just the way he moves, the way he moves is perfect for the punches that Terrence Crawford throws. You know how they say um, styles make fight. Now imagine a person who always does a certain move and your favorite punch goes with that move. That's how that's how he was catching them so perfect pause because the way he moves is in unison with the way Terrence Crawford throws his punches. So it wouldn't matter who he goes to, he would have to change the way he moves. You, you, are you getting what I'm saying? So is mm -hmm. you going to somebody else, they're going to change your style up and it may change your movement, but now you're not going to, your feet are not going to be set to throw the punches that you like to throw if you're constantly moving. Because what makes Errol so dangerous is that he's a flat-footed fighter. He He's constantly putting the pressure on people. So if he goes to somebody and they have him spinning and changing like Calvin or one of them that trains Javante, he wouldn't be as powerful because now he's going to have to learn how to punch off the back foot, and that's totally the opposite of everything we did. It's like Mike Tyson trying to punch like this. That's not Mike. All of the velocity, pause, and everything he does goes with him steamrolling forward. So I, I just think that's a bad idea. I would have never got rid of Derek James. And I and I think Errol Spence is a hell of a fighter. He's he's top top three or four in the welterweight division all time to me. But I would Now you're bugging. Yeah. Now you out of pocket. Yeah, I'm out of pocket. Out, yeah. But yeah, I'm trying time. to pick the nigga up. You know I'm trying to pick uh, the nigga up. All right, but don't, we know don't the nigga do that, ain't though. top four. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, don't do, don't it's do that. It's Hagler, it's Hearns. You, you, you disrespect the Sugar Ray Landing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. He is clearly 15. I was Robert, <laughs> Roberto <laughs> Duran. You, know, you, you got to relax, man. <laughs> You gotta relax. I was, like, I was, you was just doing, checking the room. You was, you was, I was nah, just you was, checking the room. Man. Nah, you you was doing good. You was doing good till you said that. Yeah, ain't no way that nigga better than her. Good yeah. old Duran, nigga. Yo. Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray Hagler. Aaron, Aaron Pryor. Yeah. Like, yeah, come on, man. Real Pee Wee. Isn't yeah, a few come on. niggas in Pinnell, right? Yeah, Oscar, Oscar, I believe Oscar, Oscar dabbled in it. Yeah, listen, pa Pacquiao was in welterweight. Bernard. <laughs> yeah, Bernard's middleweight. The Bernard's was middleweight the whole time. But Bernard fought down there. Bernard, he, he, what you call it? He Who never fought well, welterweight. What, when you he bet, fought you want, you did that? You, you want to bet real quick? But no, what, 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 I'm saying, what, do you want make a do you want make a light? No, no, no. I'm asking oh, the right. question. What, oh, what, what right. was Trinidad? Trinidad was lighter than him. He moved up the fight, and and Trinidad fought Bernard when he moved up in weight to fight Bernard. Bernard was a middleweight. That's why niggas was like, that's why Bernard yeah, took it yeah, personal. Yeah. Bernard was like, now niggas is playing with me. So, yeah. so oh, because he killing niggas down there. You think you could move him up, and I'm gonna punish him. That's one of the best fights I've ever seen because everybody was so 
Oh, the nigga hit so hard. But no, I was like, bro, yeah, pause on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nah, but no, I put a stop to that nonsense, man. Yeah, One so of my he, favorite he fights. Probably top 12. He probably top 12 somewhere. Top 12, top 13. I don't know, man. You gotta, we gotta go. I, I'm gonna get back to that because maybe 15. Because you gotta realize this is the niggas in the Latin the 30s and all that that was acting crazy too, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know it's almost a, a century ago, but them niggas was killing. It was tape for some reason. It's tape on them shits. Um, yeah. to add on to what you guys were saying. Yeah, you got Kodo. It's niggas you ain't talking about. Sugar Shane. Yeah, you just you being disrespectful. <laughs> you being wild no, disrespectful said number four. You said four murder. You said four murder. You said four. Yeah, I said I was trolling. I was trolling, bro. Was... You trolling yourself. Nobody's falling for that. <laughs> you, you know, you're trolling yourself, bro. I, you never let you never pause. Let me finish. He's top four of today. He's it, it, there's Earl Spence, there's there's Terrence Crawford, there's there's um, what's the nigga Ennis? Booth. What's the nigga name? Ennis. Ennis yeah, Booth. Booth. Yeah, I never had. I never had him over Boots. I never had him over the dude from um Texas, the the one that went back to Mace, college. You can spin this him. all you want and act like it's about <laughs> today, bro. You Killer. can do what you Killer. want. You, I'm, yeah, Zach to... Works was all time. Yes, you said all time. Now you're changing it to today. You did not say today. You said of all time. Then you started remembering, like, oh, I'm wilding. You didn't let. Me, then you said, yo, you didn't let me finish. You said you didn't let me finish. I just said today. You, Mace, it's gonna show. Do you know people are watching? Do you know they can see what you said? And this on YouTube, so they can rewind it and see what you said. You said tough for all time. Then you said I didn't let you finish. You said today. Then you said you was trolling. You're rushing me. You're rushing me. So my words. Murder, are... You've been talking for nine minutes. You're rushing me. <laughs> yo. You've been talking for you can go. I like your boxing analysts. You was doing great until you I said it was tough all the time. No, murder. I liked it. I'm not cutting you off, yeah, but you rushing saying, me. You're rushing me. You want this guy, my let bad my guy, plane guy, land. Let my plane yeah. land. Yeah, man. Thank yeah, you, bro. Man. my plane land. I didn't say nothing until you said you was tough all the time. I was sitting <laughs> waiting for my turn. I was, oh, I was, I was just sitting there waiting. <laughs> Stack, get my plane land, or is he gonna he gonna hijack my plane? That sounds crazy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> that sounds wild. <laughs> I don't know what code you're talking in. I ain't hijacking nobody playing pause. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Can I land my plane with pause? Yeah. Nigga, fuck yeah. you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Or you gonna hijack my plane? It's pause, man. <laughs> hey, yo, I don't like that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, that was kind of wild. <laughs> that was kind of wild. Yeah. Look, wild. Gavin, and I don't want to use that terminology, but yeah, top, you know, 15, top 15. We gave him top 15. Yeah. Top 15, Paul. All right. All right. Yeah, what I was going to say is um, about that. Merce, Mace's first, when he's talking his first 28 minutes, when I, I agree with him, he was saying, so <laughs> you should be getting rid of the trainer. <laughs> and at the end of the day, bro, that shows a sign of weakness to me. And Mace made a great point that I wasn't even going to say. It's not, you're not taking accountability. You're not, bro. You, you're yeah. not, my nigga. You got fucked up. And it's, and look, it happens in boxing. People get fucked up. I, I picked you to win last minute. I don't know what made me change my mind. I said, I think I see you fighting in the street or something. So I went with that. I, I thought the fight was a toss up. And you got because you got beat up bad, and it's no disrespect. Respectfully, it, it, we every, niggas was yo. Come on, niggas seen that joint, B. Shout out to TC to shout out to Terrence Crawford. I spoke to him. I was on Facetime with Terrence Crawford about uh, three days ago. Shout out to PT for uh, throwing me on the phone with him. He said he's gonna come up to the show next time he's in Vegas. He didn't want to do Zoom. He said he wanted to pull up to the studio. Um, so shout out to him as well. But but also. The, the trainer, what happened is this. Uh, off the fight real quick. Back to the trainer. Errol Spence lost, then Charlo lost to Canelo. He's training mm -hmm. both of them. 
Then you got all these people, Antonio Tarver getting on. Uh, I'm just using him as an example because that's the first thing that comes to mind. Talking about how he trained of the year. This is the shit I'm talking about. He should have never been trained of the year because his two top fighters lost. So now you yeah. got other people in the boxing community talking about, yeah, they were sucking dick, pause. Yeah, I, I don't know how he got top trained of the year. Because because he had good fighters, that didn't mean wow. he was trained a year. You see, you see, I'm just saying what niggas was saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm agreeing with. I'm telling you in the boxing community, the only one that comes to mind at the moment was Antonio Tarver. Because Antonio Tarver was dogging this nigga so much, he was talking, <laughs> telling him about Arrow, come down to Florida and fuck with me, man. You see what I do, yada yada yada. So that's why I said Charlo lost the Arrow Spence lost, and then niggas might have gotten his ear like. Yo, my nigga, you know he ain't it. <laughs> you know they gassed that award, right? All right, keep it up. See what happened to you and Charlo. Both y'all niggas lost bad. So that, that may be the point, but I agree with Mace when he said you're not taking accountability. Um, one loss in your career doesn't mean get ready to get training. Now, I agree with Mace again when he said bring somebody else in if you want to learn new shit. But yeah. changing trainers um, is not for everybody. He used a great example with... Uh, Fury and um, Deontay. Not only that, I remember Ricky Haddon lost to Floyd, went and got Floyd's father to start training him. After Floyd beat his ass, Ricky said, well, where your father at? Let him <laughs> train him. And then the next fight, get knocked out by Pacquiao, worse than Floyd beat you up. He knocked you out in the second round. The nigga, Floyd Mayweather Sr., I love these niggas. After the fight, you know how the trainer stay with the boxer? He left. <laughs> he left the nigga. He left Ricky. Ricky had laid out. Ricky has did his interview. Floyd did his interview from the lobby and I would tell you, so he ain't listen. I told the nigga, keep coming. He want to do what he want to do. He ain't listening. That's what happened. And it doesn't work for everybody, man. And you know what's so crazy? Another thing is the, the weight switch. That's another thing. These are all insecurity signs. Like, like if the weight wasn't the problem before, why is the weight the problem when people lose? And this is not just for him. This is for any boxer. If if you every time he fought at that weight, he won against everybody else. So why now take it up the one want to take it up the one fifty four? I mean, it really doesn't make sense. In his defense, Mason, I'm not defending him because I agree with 90% of the stuff you said tonight or as far as boxing is concerned. In his defense, before the fight, he was saying that this was going to be his last fight at 147 because he was having trouble making weight. So I'm not giving him an out or anything like that. I'm not. I'm definitely not. But I, he, he said it before the fight. I'm saying, but if you got knocked out at a lower weight, at a higher weight, you would be stronger, but the guy who knocked you out would also be stronger. I'm not making excuses for Terrence Crawford. Uh, him fight Terrence Crawford, nothing. I'm not, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying what he has said before the fight. Because he may have won the fight. He didn't, he didn't know, but he definitely said he was having trouble making I weight. Think so I'm not saying... He's been getting the advantage of being the stronger person at that weight. That's probably how he got most of his wins because he's naturally bigger and stronger than everybody in the division. So the same thing that's now a problem is the thing that was a blessing to him all the last 10 fights. Because if, if, um, if he moves up, then he don't beat Danny Garcia. He doesn't beat Sean Porter. You know, all of those people, he was probably naturally, besides Sean Porter, the rest of them, he was naturally bigger than. And he was like a weight bully of the division, like Javante at 130. It's a, it's, it's called, it's a such thing called a weight bully, where you're actually too big pause for the division and you're fighting people that you're just, you could dominate because you're, you're just bigger than them, pause. Yeah, there's a few times when you said naturally bigger than them, you didn't say pause, and it would <laughs> sound nasty. Um, but what they're doing now, Maces, they're doing now, Maces, and that's a great point. That's very accurate, what you just said. And you're absolutely right. People balloon up 20 pounds because after the weigh-in, you usually could go eat, 
and then you're getting back close to your natural weight before the fight starts. But what they do, and then it happened in the last fight with Javante, I believe, against Ryan, they're not letting you go past a certain weight anymore. So yeah. what you just said, which is 100% right, niggas is like, no, you can't go gain 20 pounds tonight. You got to yeah. stay, I believe it's one pound or two pounds over, but you can't go gain your regular weight back so that you can hit harder. But you're absolutely right. That's a great take on that. And they're trying to control that as well. Yeah. The rehydration clause. Yeah, that's what it's called. Absolutely, Mo. Yep, the rehydration clause. It's like a nigga get to get to fight at one forty, and I'm like two hundred pounds. And nigga just make one forty, and then show up like, yeah, what's up? It's like, bro, that's what um Lomachenko was saying about death, and he said, look at him, he's one eighty, <laughs> but he still held his own, you know. But that's what he was saying. Stat. And then a last one before we wrap. So we talked about John Tay Porter earlier, but now Michael Porter Jr. has stepped up because he wanted to defend his brother amid all these betting allegations that have been called upon him. So he said, I've known my brother my whole life. I know what type of duty he is. I know he's excited to play basketball and I highly doubt that he would do anything to put that in jeopardy. So thoughts on Michael Porter Jr. stepping up and speaking for John Tay Porter amid all these allegations against him. Maurice first. Oh, that shit a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? That nigga bet on himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nigga got caught. And uh, his brother want to show like his dying loyalty. It's like showing up and, you know, your cousin killed somebody. You said, oh, man, you know, my cousin's a good guy and all this other shit. That's true. But the motherfucker still killed somebody. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he got to suffer the consequences for it. And he's, uh, he probably just did that to see like, yo, bro, you know, I got your back. You know, I love you. But believe you me, they're going to search that IP address. They're going to search the credit card that was sent from. They're going to they gonna do their due diligence. And they're going to say, nigga, you fucked it up. But uh, I love it all just because like sometimes I just like wild and crazy shit, wild and crazy stories. If you follow me on Instagram, I like niggas getting knocked out, niggas jumping off of bridges, just all type of shit sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, I just like just wild shit. But this is what you get when you got capitalism. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, you know, he, he might have fucked some money up, you know what I'm saying? And probably bought a fucking G-Wagon or fucked some money up doing some other shit. And a nigga like, shit, I can just go out here and bet on myself. And, you know, when you sometimes when you do crime, you just don't really think about all the... You don't think about getting caught. You just think about getting away. And he probably never seen himself getting caught because he like, man, I ain't checking for NBA players and this is some shit that I can do. The college kid's doing it. But I'm all for gambling. I'm all for, you know, niggas trying to get away with shit sometimes. And um, his brother just uh, speaking out of like, hey, bro, I'm loyal to you, but he wasting his time. This nigga, they ain't about to let this nigga keep on playing because they, they're, they're going to use these guys as like to set precedent to try to intimidate other guys uh, from not betting on themselves because they're not about to get rid of gambling. Gambling generates too much money for the NBA. It's only getting worse. I think Cam said it the other week when he said, that they're now about to do in-game bets or something like that. I, yes. So yeah. it, gambling ain't going away. These niggas who do this crazy shit going to go away first. Yeah, shout out mm -hmm. to Underdog. Shout out to Underdog. <laughs> gang, <laughs> gang, 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 <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Yo, I, I think, you know, if it's his brother, he got to show up for his brother. You know, it's like... Like you said, it's like the mother that, you know, her son, her son killed somebody. She got to show up to court. She got to say what, what she's supposed to say. You know, like, this is my baby. My baby was a good kid. But is in listening to you, Mo, I think two things are possible to be true at the same time. Yes, this is your baby. And yes, he is a good kid. But on this night, he was not <laughs> good. <laughs> And Paul, that's what I'm looking at with 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 you know, um, Michael Porter Jr. I mean, is it Michael Porter? How you say his last name? It's yeah, Porter Michael Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, though that's your brother. That's good. You're riding for him, Paul. That's good. But he also may have gambled. You know what I'm saying? It, it could all be true at the same time, and and that's what it seems like when it comes to. Like this generation is like two things can't be true at the same time. Like, yeah, that is he did make those records. Yeah, that that did happen. 
but this happened too. They both they both happened. This ain't even really long for me, cause end of the day, you made a great scenario, Mo. Yo, you got caught with the pistol. Your brother is Michael Porter Jr. He's a world champion. He cool with the Joker. He could, yeah, he think the, yo, ain't the Joker and them niggas your man? Tell them niggas show up. My nigga, give me support. You got connections, nigga. I just got here. You a world champion. You know niggas that know niggas that know niggas. You step up first and get other niggas to vouch for my character. It's not even that simple. That's what he supposed to do. It's like, like you say, you get caught with the pistol and your brother is the councilman for the town you get caught with the pistol in. Yo, you know the judge, nigga. The DA is your nigga, right? Yo, at the end of the day, <laughs> make some shit happen. Is you that nigga or you not that nigga? Council on, Tate from Power, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? My nigga, my nigga uh, who say shit on the wire, he that nigga. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, if you got, you supposed to use your friends and your leverage right now when you're in this fucked up predicament. If you could, you could. If you could make a phone call, make a phone call. And not only that, and maybe mom and dad involved. So, yo, this nigga I can weird, Joe. Like, I ain't save him in 10th grade. Like, you nigga, tell that nigga, yo, my nigga, put the word in. You ain't gonna yeah. do that for your brother? Yeah, he is on now. <laughs> yeah. That's how I look at that scenario. Great points. I can't even argue with that. Well, Maurice, thank you for being here. You go. So, fellas. Yeah, man. Oh, you good. going men and women? You going both, boss? Um, I'm going, I'm going with both teams, man. I'm a Yukon Stores, Connecticut dude. They've been treating me right. They show love. And I've watched, I watched them rebuild. So I know you missed the first part of the show, but I'm down with Yukon, men and women. Yeah, when first part of the show, Mace, I told him that this was his team as soon as he joined the show outside of Ohio, Ohio State football. He said he'd been up there working with them before he even first show he ever did, he was pumping UConn from the jump. He didn't say title town is going to move. He didn't say that they were relocating. He didn't say that they're coming back. He didn't say any of that. He's been with UConn all the way through. And title town for UConn been in the same place in his heart. They didn't, I didn't hear him say, yo, nah, we on the move this year. <laughs> I didn't hear that one time. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? You know, now your Wi-Fi don't now your Wi-Fi don't work all of a sudden. Now all of a sudden your Wi-Fi don't work. All right, I knew it. We didn't hear nothing you say. Yeah. I'm a lifetime Yukon fan. I, I told you this Cam. <laughs> Sue Bird and Diana Tarasi way back then. I, it's always been my team. All right, my bad. Girls. 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 What's Tell the coach Paige name? I said, what's up? Hold on, hold on, real quick. What's the girl? What's the girl's coach name? Kim, I don't have time for this. <laughs> all right, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Shout, shout out to Gino. Gino. Everybody up there. <laughs> Gino Smith. <laughs> it's not Gino not Smith. That that's Gino. a quarterback. <laughs> Bro, that's a quarterback, my nigga. Gio Oriano, how you pronounce it? But Ariama. This is the shit I'm talking about. Ariama. He yeah, like said Gino Smith. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said Gino, that. Bro. Gino. Gino. <laughs> Anybody. G any Gino. Gino. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, words from the expert. Well, that is all the time. Uh, we have. Uh, okay. uh, 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 like when they doing them two for five.